Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 2. Last time we picked up a brand new shotgun, but I don't have enough orbs to upgrade that just yet, so I'll buy a blue orb. That's one entire blue orb. Yeah, that's 10,000. I, I wouldn't have had enough to upgrade it. So we'll get that down the line. Close to your eyes, but far off in your mind, the hunter must learn the value of options. Guidepost for the Hunters, Chapter 5, Clause 4. Oh, this already? Ugh. I recognize this. Things are about to start going downhill pretty quick. But first, we have a neat little mini-boss fight. We have a mini-boss fight against Frecky, and the other one is Gary. Who are two uh, wolves from Norse mythology. They were companions to Odin. All they're really going to do here is kind of bounce off the walls. Bounce off the air, too. Kind of neat. They don't do anything else, though, which sucks. They do nothing. Uh, except give us a little opportunity to test out the new shotgun. Which we have a few unique combos with. Uh, so, yeah, there's that, which is two slashes while locked on. And then you tap the uh, fire button, which gives you the uh, DMC3 fireworks combo that actually comes from this game. Uh, and there's another combo, which I don't like as much. Shotgun is sh quite strong, even at level 1. Uh, firearms in this game are generally pretty powerful, but especially the shotgun. Uh, this is the only firearm that has unique combos. And just like that, Frecky and Gary, not going to be a problem any longer. Uh, they will come back a couple of times. The uh, skeleton man fellow that they return to, he's kind of going to be our rival for this for this uh, game. I find that super odd because Nello Angelo in the previous game and Virgil in the upcoming game. They, they recur consistently at good, consistent intervals. They're introduced pretty early on, and they're always something you look forward to. We're already five missions into this game, and we're only getting a glimpse of what is essentially our, our character action rival battle character. Um, it's going to be a little while before we actually fight him for the first time. It's just this odd thing of, like, something they nailed perfectly in the very first game, they've screwed up in the second game. Uh, this battle against the Blood Goats and the Puyas can be a little bit tough sometimes, but since we just picked up a shotgun... By the way, I, I neglected to mention this, but we can now switch firearms on the fly with a tap of the left trigger. Uh, the shotgun makes short work of them. It stuns the blood goats, knocks them on their asses, and it really demolishes the Puyas. Uh, up here, there's a secret room. I want to see something real quick. Yeah, okay, so this is technically only level three. Um, we've skipped a bunch of secret rooms up to this point. This would normally be, I want to say, either six or eight if you're doing these all in order. Um, but I just wanted to demonstrate something that... The secret rooms in this one aren't fixed. Uh, instead, they'll just show up whatever order you do them in. So, instead of this being like, you, you can't do them out of order is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's probably a better way of phrasing that. You can't do the secret missions in this one out of order. Uh, and all the even ones drop blue orbs for you. So I'll probably wind up doing only one more secret mission at some point in this playthrough. Yeah, odd ones, you just get white orbs, uh, health refills, a couple red orbs. Even numbered secret rooms give you blue orbs though. Or blue orb fragments, I actually don't even remember which one's which. Uh, and we have vast empty open environments which is kind of a hallmark of DMC2 going forward 
Oh, did I accidentally go, go the wrong way? Yeah. That looks wrong. Looks like you're going the wrong direction if you go up that path. Hey, the Oranguera that we fought as a boss fight in a previous chapter has already become a regular ass enemy. He's accompanied by a couple friends. Uh, so that's annoying. But in Devil Trigger form, we can finish him off pretty quick. Oop, don't mean to be doing the round trip. Usually the round trip only triggers when you're actually in uh, the air using the, uh, what's it called, the air heart. If you're floating up in the air and you tap the, the uh, melee attack button, uh, with the air heart on in Devil Trigger, it'll do a little uh, variation of Dante's round trip sword combo. So the Oranguera still has about as much health as before. But now that he's accompanied by a couple of friends, he's a little bit more annoying than he was when we fought him as just a standalone boss. Now, hopefully finish him off uh, with my S rank intact, though, so I can get a couple bonus orbs out of him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the amount of bonus orbs you get is dependent on what your ranking is solely at the time of an enemy's death and no other point before then. Uh, and we're starting to see little variations of standard enemies that we've been running into. Like, we saw the Blood Goats, the uh, variations of goat enemies. These are different variations of, I believe, the Finnish Demons. Or the, uh, the Mishras. I actually didn't catch the name. Some of the names in this are a bit tough for me, of enemies. They just kind of blur together. Um... Let's see, there's a secret room, I think, to the left of that tanker, but I don't want to do that. Oh, here we go, here we go. Infested tanks. Seems like a good enough idea at first, but then they can barely hit you, and you can just get right up next to them, and they have no way of actually harming you. And you can just do whatever you want. They're pretty much big piles of armor HP. No threats. I fucking hate this. This is so stupid. Mm. Mission 5, this is what I... Oh. This Mission 5 is very distinctly the point at which DMC2 just shits itself and then starts dragging its ass all over the carpet. Uh, this is where they clearly just run out of good ideas already. And we're only five missions into an 18 mission game. So it's pretty bad. It's pretty goddamn bad. These things just... They... Ah, oh God. They take forever. They're tiny mini-bosses, except... There's no design here. It's not even bad design, it's just, it doesn't exist. But at least... Oh, wait a minute, no, there are fucking three of them. You get to it and you think, Oh, well, at least I only had to do that once. Now you get to do this three times. Is there anything I could say about this? No, not really. They can hurt you if you're at like mid-range or if you're up here if like you stand on top of them they have a little machine gun turret that can hit you you would think that they would be able to like I don't know drive forward and crush you underneath their treads to just keep you on your toes a little bit no you would think that they would maybe be accompanied by some other enemies who could hurt you or who could distract you while you're trying to take it down? No. You'd think that, I don't know, they would have less health for an enemy that literally can't retaliate against you. Um, and is only there to be inconvenient? No. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with this enemy. Oh hey, I did a round trip. Not exactly sure how I triggered that on the ground. I hate this so much. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward. Because, uh, why not? No. 
we... Oh, okay, it's dead. Well, that's the last infested tank. In this mission. In this mission. I'm pretty sure they come back later. Uh, with the infested tank dead. By the way, you need to kill all three of those. It doesn't seem apparent, but you actually have to. Uh, you can come up here to the ramp. There's a blue orb fragment up there, and I want to make sure I don't miss this, because this is actually pretty easy to miss. Uh, there's some rubble back here that you can jump behind, and there's a gap in the fence somewhere. Uh, this is going to lead to our first optional heart piece for the amulet. Here it is. That is the Offense Heart. Uh, let's go into the amulet and see what our new item is. Uh, so this one takes up the bottom row. This one enhances the amount of damage that we do while in Devil Trigger. So we now have three heart pieces that we can use all at once. Uh, that would have been nice to have against those tanks. It would have been it would have made them go a little bit quicker. Make you fight three piles of, of too much HP to get to an item that would have made fighting them quicker. Oh, but we are not done with shittiness. The same mission that introduces us to three infested tanks is also the mission that introduces us to the infested chopper. Uh, so it's kind of pointless to fight the infested chopper out there. Instead, we get this uh, flaccid chase sequence. The building just catches fire from the bottom up. Uh, is a little bit of a false ticking clock going on here. It's meant to pressure you into thinking that you don't have much time to ascend the uh, tower. Really, the fire just keeps up with you. So every time you move up a floor, the fire moves up. Uh, I don't think the fire moves up on its own. You do have the chopper inside harassing you. You know what? Fuck this. I'm going to switch on over, away from the quick heart, back to the aerial heart. Because I have plenty of devil trigger. Actually, my gauge is full. No, thank you, platforming. I'm out of here. Yeah, you can see the fire just keeping up with you. There's really no pressure on you here. And that didn't even take that. Oh, don't wall run. This is why uh, wall run's kind of inconvenient sometimes, as much as I like that. It's a little bit inconvenient in these narrow walkways when you want to roll for speed because it's the quickest way of getting around. Uh, instead, you'll usually just run off the wall. Uh, we still can't fight the infested chopper yet. I mean, you can hurt it. I don't think it matters because you still have to fight it again later on at the end of the mission. And it doesn't really even do that good of a job of harassing you. Oh boy. I'm having a hell of a hard time staying positive about this. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll... Yeah. I won't say too much more about it until we get to the actual boss fight part. Because it's a fucking doozy. Of shit. Shit hurricane. A shit cane We have seen all of its attacks. So far. Um... While we climb up this tower, uh, this second tower, uh, I want you to just imagine how you could make uh, a boss fight against a helicopter or a DMC game really a lot of fun. Just kind of try to come up with some options in your head. And we'll see if uh, any of your good-ass ideas translate into this game. Also, that is a full blue orb. Not just a blue orb fragment, that's a full health upgrade. 
Uh, I thought this was a whole lot worse than it is, but... Oh, no, I'm wrong. There is a shitty part coming up. Uh, so, platforming in a Devil May Cry game, often the worst thing ever. Very, very often. Uh, if you watch my Devil May Cry 1 playthrough, you'll know how I feel about platforming in DMC. So, why don't we just get chased down by an infested helicopter while doing a little bit of platforming. Really, really shitty platforming. These are pretty tough to actually get onto. Oh boy. Hmm. Yeah. Plus you got Puyas. I'm out of here. I'm just gonna air hard again. Bye, platforming. Oh, I love you, Aerial Heart. Now we get to actually fight the infested chopper. What a reward that we have received. So, in the interim, have you thought of ways to make this an interesting boss fight? The developers didn't. They gave up. Don't you just love that sound? Every time I hit Devil Trigger, I just hold the fire button down, I expect it to crash back to the XMB and to get, like, a little Devil May Cry HD collection sound drivers have crashed message. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like sound drivers crashing. This is the whole fight. Mercifully, this is only normal mode, so it doesn't have that much health. Can you imagine doing this on Dante Must Die? It's not a challenging fight. I basically stood still and it hasn't been able to hit me. I'm just mashing the fire button. Because what we really want to do against the Devil May Cry boss, a game known for its deep, complex, interesting melee combat, is just give yourself RSI, give yourself Carpal Tunnel uh, by repetitively mashing square to fire Ebony and Ivory. And then sometimes you get a little bit of reprieve because you could just hold square down when you're in Devil Trigger for just machine gun ebony and ivory fire. Fuck this goddamn boss. Do you understand why I hate this game? This is the quality of boss design. The same mission that we fought the three invested tanks, we fight this motherfucking boss. Fuck this game. Fuck this game. Fuck this game. Fuck this game. Mmm. So bad. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, God, I dodged an attack. Look at that shit. Look at me go, I had to dodge a whole attack. Uh, it's fire and missiles at me. Missiles which I've been um, shooting out of the air. Like that. Just by doing my normal thing. The auto target uh, just locks onto them. I'm shoddy any- no, shoddy's not good for this. Occasionally I'm realizing I have to jump into the air to do damage a little bit more efficiently. Uh, because sometimes it goes out of line of sight. You can't double jump and shoot, though, because if you double jump, he'll do his rainstorm. Such a fucking interesting fight this is. Fuck this fight. I recall, like, a mission ago, I actually praised one of the boss designs in this. This is not that fight. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Fuck this boss. And we outie. Well, that's done. I, I have no words. What a pile of shit. Uh, the rest of the game from here on out is not going to fare much better. Although, I do think there's an okay boss coming up in this. Actually, no, it's more like an okay half a boss coming up. Uh, before we go into it, though, I definitely want to upgrade my shotgun because the shotgun happens to be really good against this boss. Uh, and I guess a purple orb. Purple orbs will increase the length of your Devil Trigger gauge. So, its extremities reach the sky, its intestines reflect the color of darkness, its name means a tower of misery. Excellent. Did you know Infested Chopper also means a pile of misery?
mission five, uh, mission six, sorry, is a boss fight against this pretty cool looking boss that we saw. We got kind of spoiled on this one from the opening montage, uh, the FMV montage before the game actually started. Uh, fighting his first form is just this. Again, like the infested tanks, they didn't think if you're just in his face, he can't hit you. They didn't think of a way for him to hit you here until he reaches less than half health, at which point he slams his fists into the ground and starts summoning really hard to see flaming bats, at which point you just switch to Ebony and Ivory and let the targeting system do its job. Ugh. Damn it. This game sucks. I can't stand it. Uh, by the way, did you see that Sonic Adventure shit going on in that cutscene? That was the straight-up perfect chaos cutscene. Perfect chaos, boss. Sonic Adventure predates this, right? Sonic Adventure was 98, I think. This is 2003. Yeah, they stole this from Sonic Adventure. Come on. Uh, this fight, this part of the fight is actually a little bit fun. Because he does stuff, and he's threatening, and forces you to, you know, adopt some new tactics for him. Um, see if you can spot the point at which he also steals an attack from a previous Devil May Cry boss. Uh, it's going to be coming up around half health, I want to say. Uh, so the shotgun's still really good here. Um, man, I should have played this on Devil May Die, or uh, Dante Must Die. Because this fight, this part of the fight is actually a lot more interesting on that mode, since there are so many more projectiles. Here we go! Straight up stealing attacks and assets from Griffin in Devil May Cry 1. Uh, let's see if I can actually make the uh, Aerial Heart round trip work for me a little bit better this time. I didn't have enough gauge to keep that going too long. So yeah, this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, there's a lot of projectiles to dodge. There's a lot of repositioning to be done. There's a lot of mobility. Um, there's no reason to rely solely on the guns, although they're a good supplement. This is what a pretty decent fight should be. Um, and since it's only on normal, you can't really fault it for being easy uh, because it does get pretty challenging on the higher difficulties. This is an okay fight. This is not bad. Um, yeah, I, I have nothing else to say about that. It's kind of cool. I like it. He's got a nice design. And he's dead. Okay, so we've hit the point at which the game is no longer fun or very good at all. Or even kind of approaching good, resembling good. No. We've hit the uh, total complete shit show portion of the game. See you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.